This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Tuesday, March 8th. Attorney at law Lalu Hanuman believes the time has come for an LGBTQ couple to challenge Barbados's marriage laws. He shared his views during Monday's launch of the Intimate Conviction 2 volume affirming peace, truth, and justice for LGBTQ people at the St. Michael's Cathedral. Pointing to a February ruling by the Caribbean Court of Justice that a man can be charged with raping another man in Barbados as it deemed the Sexual Offence Act gender neutral. Hanuman contends the island's marriage laws are also gender neutral and therefore a similar case could be made for same sex marriages to be allowed on the island. Given that most of the Marriage Act is also gender neutral, except for that just that one section, which I think was section three, um, which um, speaks about um, void and prohibited marriages in terms of categories. There's no other reference in that act saying that uh, um, uh, only a man and a woman can marry. There's, there's, it, it, it doesn't say in the prohibited or void sections that, they, um, that, that, they, um, you know, that a, a man can't marry a man or a, a woman can't marry a woman. And I think you know, if, it ought to be considered a test case where uh, an LGBTQ person approaches the magistrate to get the, the bans published, etc., and um, uh, tries to get married to um, somebody of, the, of their same um, gender, and I'm confident it will be refused at the magistrate's court's level, but then challenge it all the way up to the Caribbean Court of Justice, and I think it could well succeed. On this International Women's Day, Prime Minister Mia Motley challenges all citizens to play their part in tearing down the walls of gender equality. Around the globe today, celebrations are being held under the theme, Break the Bias, that encourages everyone to work towards a world that is equitable, inclusive, and free from bias and discrimination, so the playing field is leveled for all women moving forward. The issue of gender inequality is not a woman's problem, but it is an all-of-society problem not only in its origins and impacts, but indeed, my friends, in its remedy. Respect is the greatest tool that we can employ as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. It is in our duty of care to one another that we will see the walls of inequality torn down. My own experience has taught me that there is nothing in this world that is insurmountable if we face the challenges together. As we celebrate today, let us be mindful of the long journey ahead because there remains so much to be accomplished and we know that but bit by bit hand in hand day by day we can do what it takes to erase gender inequality and to secure that sustainable tomorrow for all Prime Minister Motley hailed the contribution of Barbadian women at all levels of society who have stood as providers, champions, and defenders for others despite the odds. She urged women and girls to always strive for excellence. Do not lease out space in your head to anyone and for anyone. Stay focused and never limit your ambition and never doubt your abilities. Aspire, my friends, to heights only you can determine. Meanwhile, Executive Director of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mishka Lobin clark is not satisfied that enough women are represented in boardrooms or owning businesses in Barbados. Addressing the opening of the BCCI's first ever power summit at the Hilton Resort under the theme Break the Bias on Monday, she said the Chamber will take action to break this barrier. She also called on women in leadership roles in Barbados to lead by example and help women who are marginalized. A McKinsey research study cited that companies in the top quartile of gender diversity on executive teams were 25% more likely to have above average performance and that the companies with more than 30% female executives were more likely to outperform companies that do not have as many female executives. However, Research shows that just 16% of small business employers and one in three entrepreneurs are women. There is also evidence stating that fewer, fewer women get access to financing and business loans and only 15% of bank financing applications 
and 20% of new primary business bank accounts openings are coming from women. And now for today's COVID-19 update, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 156 new COVID-19 cases from the 1016 tests carried out on Monday. The cases comprised 46 persons under the age of 18 and 110 who were 18 years and older. There were 48 people in isolation facilities, while 1,320 were in home isolation. A 97-year-old unvaccinated man died from the virus on Monday. The death toll stands at 323. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Guyana, there's widespread debate on hairstyles for school, and the education minister says there will be consultations to inform the much-needed changes. Presently, we're enforcing subjective rules on what we believe neat and tidy is. If we're changing that, there will be a change, and that has to also take root and grow, and, and everybody has to understand. So you see, it's not only... The girl who must understand that she can now wear her hair however she wants to, or the boy, whichever one, which, however far we go, but also the teacher who understands it. That was the Minister of Education, Priya Manik Chen, who, during a live panel discussion on Monday, acknowledged that there are some hair rules in schools that need changing, but consultations are required to generate understanding and acceptance of those changes. For Salima Hines, a feminist and gender specialist, these rules do indeed need overhauling, more so since they do not foster an inclusive learning environment and because they are simply not culturally sensitive. Um, a lot of these rules have been inherited from before Guyana was Guyana. Um, and these rules had a specific purpose in terms of controlling uh, the expression of, you know, black citizens, Indian citizens, anyone who did not align with colonial uh, norms of what was proper. And I'm glad like we mentioned at points about the school rules talk about neatness, which is completely subjective. So we have these ideals of what constitutes neatness. And the reality is we live in a culture where our hair would not be considered neat. Many people evidently do not agree with these positions. Some wrote that hairstyle rules help to maintain discipline in schools and argue that permitting hairstyle freedom may lead to distractions from schoolwork. Because of these differing positions, Manik Chan said it is important to involve as many people as possible in the consultation. On the international front, Ukraine's second largest city is in ruins. Kharkiv is home to 1.4 million people and it has been devastated by Russian air attacks. Buildings are flattened and the streets are filled with rubble. More this report from Al Jazeera Television. A man walks carefully down a street, totally destroyed. Russian bombs have ripped through these buildings in central Kharkiv. The area is silent and brutally scarred. Shrapnel has ripped through cars. Masonry, thrown in the blasts, has crushed others. Flames still rise from buildings nearby. Bomb craters and twisted steel. This street in central Kharkiv shows you just how devastating the effect of Russian bombing of this city has been. An entire street totally destroyed. Many of these buildings have people's homes in them. Private residences, flats, 
some of them still smoking. One of the main things that many people here tell you is that they can in no way understand how the leader of a country like Russia could do something like this to a city like Kharkiv. Tessa is in shock. She walks around in a daze looking at the destroyed businesses and homes. I cannot think straight. I can't find the words. It's barbaric, terrible. The world is shaking. I just don't understand. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.